Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the head gore. Head gore is one of the patterns that everybody gets confused, how to lay it out, how to get measurement like the distance, the circumference, and details like that. Depends on the head of the shape, right? So we're going to go into detail about the layout, the fabrication, and the installation techniques. If you guys have any questions about that, let me know in the comments below. And if you get a lot of value out of this video, please share with your friends in the industry of industrial installation mechanical. That being said, let's go and look in the video. A head gore layout is not difficult to lay out. It's just confusing depending where you got the measurement and what's around the tank and center of the tank and, and little details like that, right? So that being said, let's see what we need. When it comes to laying out a head gore, right, it's important that we have all these four things we are about to mention. First, let's make sure that let's get the measurement from the center of the head to the well of the body of the tank right before it turns into the body. Second, we're gonna do the circumference and the distance between the center and the well of the tank, basically where it turns into the body again. Once we have that, um, we could now make sure what our tank is gonna be. Normally, a uh, head this big goes between five to six inches. So basically it takes up over like 50 gores and you know, dependence of the circumference, right? But we're getting a little bit more in details like this, um, and and how many cores it's gonna take total. So, the circumference of this vessel is basically two eighty six. You divide that by five inches, which that's gonna be the back of your gourd, and that's gonna give you the number of gourds that it's gonna take to put around the head of the ve of this vessel. And that's basically it's going to take 60, 56 gores, right? 28 gores going left and 28 gores going right. Now that we have this conference, we have the number of gores we're going to use and also the measurement in the back. We need the diameter of this. The diameter of this uh, vessel is going to be 91 inches, right? That means that if our diameter is 91 inches, our radius would be equivalent to 45.5. So when you guys see this little strip, uh, I want you guys to guess basically what we're gonna say or give us an answer, right? So the, that means if our radius is 45.5, what would be our distance? Can you guys take a guess? Our distance would be also, most of the time, the same as the radius, 45.5 inches. Now, keep in mind that the distance do vary, right? It just depends how the insulation sits around the tank and how the shape of your head vessel. Now, let's talk about how we're gonna lay this out. You see the, three, the two green center lines? Those two lines, they're gonna be three quarter uh, apart from each other. Once you have that, make sure you mark the distance of your head gore, which is we say is going to be 45.5. You divide 45.5 into four parts and it give you just like got a number right there on the bottom where it start one, two, three, and four, which is the last line at the very end. Make sure you lift five or three inches where you see the orange line. That would be the lap of the back of the gores. Some people do three, other people do five. Next, what we're gonna do is open our divider half of five, right? We said that our measurement was five. We're gonna get our divider and open the half of five, which is that, that would be two and a half. We're gonna get that two and a half in our divider. We're gonna make a quadrant, just like you see in this picture. Just make a quadrant like we're doing the T, right? So you make a quadrant and you divide the quadrant in four equal parts, just like you're doing the T. Once you do that, you square your lines and you number your lines. One, two, three. The small lines, blue line, is gonna be numbered as the big green lines. And what you're gonna do is open your divider, just like I'm showing you here with this divider on line number three and you're gonna go to line number three and put that same distance on the top line 
make a mark and do the same thing for the bottom and make a mark. Repeat the same process for line number two. Up your divider at the distance on line number two. Go to the top green line, make a mark, and go to the bottom green line and make another mark, just like this. Just like you see the blue mark. And we do the same thing for line three. Once we got our marks, make sure that that uh, we verify that and we got all our four lines marked up. Don't forget the lap, right? Once we get the tracing part, once we start tracing the line with a fresh curve ruler, make sure you connect all the marks that you did uh, for the top mark and the bottom mark. And don't forget the lap, um, yeah, the lap line, the very first one, right? Make sure you verify everything is nice and uniform. Now let's talk about the crimp and bead. So you see how from line zero to line three, the bead start and stops. That's how the, the you need to put a center dot there. Why? The center dot is going to show you where to start and finish a bead. Same thing you do with the um, crimp, right? You do with the crimp, you actually started from line zero all the way to line four. But you still need to put a center dot just so you know that that's uh, your dot as well. It helps you uh, crimp it better and make sure all your gores are tight and uniform. Like I said, don't forget to add the line for the lap. This is, this is another important part here, guys. It's very important, right? We got the lap. It's nice and straight. We we got our certain lines in, on line zero and, and two. Another thing that we got to make sure here is when we are working with a with a pipe in the center of the of the vessel, we got to make sure that we make that pipe center on the gore too, just like here in the picture. Say this is an inch pipe, you open your divider at four inches and you make that cut out so you don't get confused when you lay out the gore. That's the last thing you're going to do once you lay out your gore. And this is the right way to do it. And this is where people get confused confused a lot so now another thing is your 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 center points right don't forget to mark your center points here um basically our uh where our center point is going to help us right there is just to make sure that we know where we're lapping or and, and where we're starting right once you have your pattern nice and cut, make sure you trace that pattern over here. And guess what are those little blue stickers, green, yellow stickers? Those are the uh, center points you got to put, right? Make sure you don't forget when you trace, you don't forget your center points on the gore. Make sure you are cutting that correctly, too. You don't have you don't want to have uh, the metal all the cut out all crooked because that's how your B and crimp is going to look like. You don't want to also uh, mess up your gores, right? You want to make sure when you start your gore, it looks nice, straight, and the caulking part will look also nice and even with less gap in there. It's fairly easy to mess up. That's why it's really good to pay attention to all this little detail. You think it don't matter, but it does matter when it comes to the finished product. And also make sure you have the right set of tools for this. So. With that being said, I would like to touch a little bit about your starting gore, your finished gore, your left gores, and your right gores. So this top one here, can you guys guess what's going to be that first gore? Okay. That first gore is um, it's basically going to be a left gore, right? Keep in mind, we got to cut 28 gores that's going to go left. So all 28 gores is going to be crimped this way and beat this way. And over here, I, I accidentally put 26, but it's actually 28. That means our next gore on the bottom of our left one is going to be our right gore. Right? They both are crimped the opposite way. And beat it the opposite way. So make sure you don't get that confused. Once you start, you you cut your 
What's your trades and cut your cores separating by half and half, 28 and 28? And that way you can't get confused and do all of them on one side when you creep it or beat it. So now the one with the two crimper is gonna be your started core, and the one with the two beeps is gonna be your finished core. And you can, you you're only gonna need one of each for this section. Make sure you cut an extra gore and don't crimp it or beat it yet. Just so in case you do need it, you already know which gore to crimp or not. Um, that being said, you're going to need four strips, about three, two inches long strip, depending how wide it's your head and how wide they sit on the head of the tank. It's going to be rough, uh, the same distance as your core. And typically it's three inches thick, right? So core four strip of those. That's going to be your cross strips. And either you could put a full piece if you don't have no piping or main weight on the center of your head. Of, uh, or you could put a flashing which a flashing is uh, basically like an end cap that goes on your main way or your center pipe if you have a center pipe in there, and it's just, it's gonna and then the thickness of that of that flashing is gonna be uh, bigger than where you have enough time to screw right on the on the on the head of the tank. So here your blue lines are your your strips right you put your strip you put your center piece your, the center blue circle is your center piece and you're going to make sure it looks like a cross and make sure those are very nice and tight because those are where you're going to touch start putting your gorge so that's that's really that's a really good point to make sure they are very tight when it comes to your this green gore here represent your starter gore right this started gore people start this gore on the bottom of the tank it just depends people sometimes they put it different right some people i install it like this i prefer to install it like this i just send it the gore directly others are, like to just start the gore from one side of the gore straight to the center like this and then work their way out right if you see this little section pumping out on the back of the gore, that means that's the lap, the five inches we gave it. So that being said, what we're gonna do is put this center gore high out, typically install it, start installing the gores. So you see how my center gores have two crimps. Now, what I wanna make sure that my left gore that I'm, with the red lines I'm gonna start installing is it's going to overlap enough to cover the crimp. That's just how much I want it to overlap. Just enough to cover the crimp on my gore, on my first, on my starter gore. I don't need to overlap no more. That's why the crimps are very important. It helps to indicate how far you need to go and how far can you go, right? So you do that for the following gore. Because keep in mind, each gore got a crimp and a beat. And then you get the other gore, put it over that. You can only go about whatever you gave that cramp, three quarter cramp, half an inch cramp. You can only go that far per gore. And another good point here to point out is that you see in the center, all the B, the B side of the gore is pointing directly to the center. On the B side of the gore is pointing directly to the center. And that's how you're able to line up all your gores to the center. That means when you get to your nine o'clock gore, it's gonna be aligned directly with the center. The B side of the gore is gonna be aligned directly with the center. And you do that with all of your gores. Basically, you're gonna do that all the way till you get to the top center of the, well, your left gore. And you can do that with all your right gore until you get to the top um, right center. And those are really good points to point out. And the way we install the score, right? We secure in the center and then we pull with a nipper or with a punch all the way down. And then we secure it to the metal of the body of the vessel. So once we put halfway all the way to the top, one side, and halfway all the way to the top, to my right side, you have a, a, a finished piece, right? That is your it's your uh, finished gore. And keep in mind, if, if you're paying attention, that that gore has, 
have to beat on each side. I highlight I highlight a yellow so you guys can see that is completely different gore. Same pattern, just just be on both sides instead of crimp. And and keep in mind as well that it depends how you install your gore, how even they went. You may have to modify this one either a little bit wider or slightly um uh smaller, right, or thinner. Most of the time I don't have to uh readjust the gore. Or we cut the gore but if you whatever you do it's gonna go right in the center just like this where to be on the side that means you know you're gonna cover both sides of the head once you have all your gores installed you're gonna open your divider typically six or five inches depending how big is your uh, head if it's a small head probably it's like every four or three inches if it's a big head every five or six inches it just depends how small or big is your head. So what you're going to end up doing is this are where the screw is going to go. And once you put another flashing over all your gores again, you're going to start from the center of that flashing. Outside, uh, outside area of the flashing. And you're going to just move your walk your divider on the bead side of the gore. Only on the B side is where you're going to put your screw every five inches and you're just basically going to move every five inches and that way once you mark your where your divider every five inches on each score now you have something to secure your screws and that will make your head nice and uniform with the screw with the layout of the gore all, all the way around All this is, is very easy. You just got to make sure that you practice this and you are starting it correctly. Um, you want to pay close attention to the small detail because it's the small detail that's going to make this really good. So what online service we offer? Quarter Shop offer multiple online service to different type of individual in the installation field. And one of them is Installation Consultant. If you're an installation company or a individual who are struggling in the field, I could help you out with uh, learning more about the tools or learning more about the trade. We also offer basic installation course, prior one-to-one -one training, sheet metal course layout. We have those courses available online. Uh, for anyone out there who would like to learn more about installation, for people who would like to learn more about estimating course, we do have a installation estimating course online available uh, with a different proposal, with a proposal with a uh, takeoff sheet. And I'll show you how to be, how to mark up, how to deal with the vendor, coordinate, and plan your job very effectively. Also, we offer a custom course depending on what you want to learn and, and what you want to learn. So maybe something specific and something more to your need and we have done in person in group in person group training for different companies i remember we did one in canada we were, we also done one through online completely so that being said for anyone who are interested in this course right until january 6 i will give you a 30 percent off and all these courses that I offer, 30% off. This is highly valuable. You guys will advance a lot in your career, either personally or professionally, or your company will, bring, will be up to speed with the latest uh, training or information about industrial installation. Thank you very much, everyone. You guys have a blessed day.